Hello, my name is Gretchen Brock, and I'm the National Register and Survey Program Manager at the Historic Preservation Division, which is a division of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. The Historic Preservation Division is Georgia's State Historic Preservation Office. The Georgia Register of Historic Places has essentially the same process and criteria as the National Register, and the paperwork is the same. The Georgia Register was set up for our state grant and tax programs, so I'm just going to focus on the National Register process. This presentation will discuss what the National Register of Historic Places is, what the National Register does and does not do, how it helps preserve historic resources in your community, the benefits of being listed in the National Register, and how to get historic properties listed in the National Register in Georgia. So what is the National Register and what can it do to save historic properties in your community? In 1966, the United States Congress passed the National Historic Preservation Act, which established our country's public historic preservation programs, including the National Register. This legislation and the programs it created are based on the belief that, quote, the historical and cultural foundations of the nation should be preserved as a living part of community life and development." End quote. Preservation programs were established in large part as a response to large infrastructure projects and urban renewal projects in the 1950s and 60s, which caused the demolition of historic places throughout the country. The National Register of Historic Places was created as part of the National Re Historic Preservation Act. The National Register is our nation's official list of historic places worthy of preservation. The National Register of Historic Places includes individual buildings like the Webb Family Farmhouse in Sumter County and the Griffith Penley House in Pickens County. The National Register includes commercial buildings like the Bank of Surrency in Appling County and the Jones Store in Troop County. The National Register includes industrial buildings such as the Southern Spring and Bed Company in Atlanta and agricultural buildings like the Whiskey Bonding Barn in Pike County. The National Register also lists community landmark buildings. These are important public buildings in our everyday lives like schools and depots and religious buildings. The National Register also lists structures like historic bridges and rail lines. Another type of resource the National Register lists are historic sites. These include battlefields and cemeteries and archaeological sites. The National Register also lists objects like monuments and fountains. The Zero Mile Post in Atlanta is listed in the National Register. The National Register also lists historic districts. Districts are buildings, sites, structures, and objects that are grouped together in a concentrated area in their environmental setting. The most common type of historic district in Georgia is a residential neighborhood, followed by downtown commercial districts and farms industrial complexes like mills and mill villages, and institutions like school complexes. If a property is listed within a historic district, it gets the same recognition and benefits as being individually listed. In Georgia, we encourage listing of historic districts when possible because more properties and property owners can benefit from National Register listing in one effort. So now that we know what types of resources are found in the National Register, we need to know what the National Register does and does not do and how it helps preserve historic resources. Listing in the National Register helps preserve historic properties. The National Register is a recognition program that has the same standards nationwide. The National Register is also a documentation process. National Register nominations form an important archive of America's historic built environment through written descriptions, histories, and photographs. 
by making information about historic resources available through the National Register process, National Register listing helps ensure that historic properties are taken into account in the planning of federal and state funded, licensed, or permitted projects. This is often referred to as Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act, or the environmental review process. For example, if the Georgia Department of Transportation wants to widen a road and use federal highway money, they must take into account the effect of the road widening on historic resources. If you remember only one thing about historic preservation, the most important thing to remember is that National Register listing does not place any obligations or restrictions on the use of private property whatsoever. Therefore, it does not actually protect properties. It identifies them for preservation considerations. Even in the case of federal projects, a recordation of historic properties may be all that is left. National Register listing is not the same as local historic district zoning or local landmark designation. A lot of people have this misconception. Local historic designations are similar to your local zoning and building codes. Local historic designations are determined by local governments and the residents of that particular community. The boundaries of a National Register district may be very different than the local district boundaries. National Register boundaries are drawn following the National Register guidelines, and these are a concentrated area of contiguous historic resources. Okay, so now we know what the National Register is and what it does and does not do. Let's talk about the benefits of National Register listing. Besides being recognized, National Register designation makes historic properties eligible for federal and state grant assistance for preservation purposes. These grants are generally for public buildings owned by local governments and nonprofit organizations. There are no grants available for private individuals or private residences through the National Register process. An example of how National Register listing and a grant from our office help save a historic building is the case of the Noble Hill School in Bartow County. Here is the school before the grant and as it was listed in the National Register. It is in need of repair, but has retained its historic materials, craftsmanship, design, location, and association with the community. And here is the school after the grant and after repair work was completed. Owners of National Register listed properties may qualify for federal and state tax incentives. Our office administers three tax incentive programs for rehabilitating historic properties. Owners of income producing properties are eligible for federal and state tax incentives for rehabilitation work that meets preservation standards. The Fulton Bag and Cotton Mill in Atlanta is an example of a large scale rehabilitation project. For residential and income producing properties, we have two state tax incentive programs. For more specific information on these programs, please see our website or contact our office. Because you are receiving a financial benefit through the Internal Revenue Service and the Georgia Department of Revenue, you do have to follow preservation standards. Again, these programs are optional and we encourage you to contact our office before you begin. So now let's talk about how to get properties listed in the National Register in Georgia so people can take advantage of the benefits of National Register listing. What properties are eligible? In order to be listed in the National Register, a property must meet three tests. These are called the National Register Criteria for Evaluation. First, a property must be over 50 years old. This is not a hard and fast rule. Second, a property must maintain its historic integrity. That is, a property or district much, must pretty much look the same today as it did in the past. For an individual building, the exterior and the interior must maintain its historic integrity. For a district, only the exteriors are The third test is that a historic property or district must meet one of the four National Register criteria. They can meet more than one, but it has to meet at least one. The criteria are based on important themes in our nation's history and are very broad so that they are inclusive rather than exclusive. The first one is 
National Register Criterion A refers to places that are associated with historic events or activities that contribute to the broad patterns of our history. These properties are associated with broad themes such as agriculture, education, industry, women's history, transportation, maritime history and navigation, commerce and community planning and development, civil rights and African American history, among other broad themes. Criterion B is for places that are associated with significant persons in our nation's history, such as the Gertrude Ma Rainey House in Columbus, significant for Ma Rainey, the mother of the blues, and President Jimmy Carter's boyhood home in archery near Plains. Criterion C are for places significant in architecture, engineering, or landscape architecture. A building can be a good example of an architectural style, such as the Greek Revival, Robert Toombs House, or a good example of a common house type, such as this gabled L cottage. Historic districts are significant for the wide range of architectural types and styles, such as the Augusta Downtown Historic District, which includes buildings built from the mid-19th century through 1967. All these buildings are listed in the National Register. Criterion D is for places that have the potential to yield important information about our past through prehistoric or historic archaeology. For National Register nominations in general, an archaeological investigation and a report need to be prepared by a professional archaeologist in order to prove that a site has the potential to yield important information. So now we know what the National Register is, what properties are eligible, and what benefits there are, let's discuss specifics about the National Register program in Georgia. The National Register of Historic Places is maintained by the National Park Service of the U.S. Department of the Interior. In Georgia, the National Register program is administered by the Historic Preservation Division. Nominations are submitted to our office by Georgians throughout the state. Nominations come from the public, not from our office. As of March 31st, 2011, in Georgia, we have 2,043 listings in the National Register, and this includes over 600 historic districts, which can range in size from three buildings to over 2,000 buildings, totaling approximately 75,602 historic resources listed in the National Register in Georgia. In Georgia, we have a very user-friendly program that encourages nominations from the public. Unlike other states, we do not require that a professional consultant prepare the nomination. We have developed user-friendly forms and our staff provides support for getting the nominations completed. There is a process for nominations that involve research, evaluation, and planning. We encourage you to visit our website to learn more about the process and to contact our office for guidance. Requests for National Register listings are first reviewed by the Historic Preservation Division. If a property or district meets the National Register criteria and is documented to National Register standards, then the nomination is scheduled for our Georgia National Register Review Board. This is an independent board of preservation-related professionals. The review board meets two times a year in the spring and fall. If the proposed nomination passes the review board, then the proposal is given to the State Historic Preservation Officer, who then submits it to the National Register in Washington, D.C. The keeper of the National Register has the final approval, and then the property or district is officially listed. The keeper of the National Register has final approval, and the property or district is officially listed in the National Register. People often ask me how, how long it takes to get a nomination listed. Because the National Register was set up as a documentation process and is reviewed on three different levels, it is not a quick process. A minimum of 12 to 18 months after the nomination is received by our office is a general time frame. 
property owners can take advantage of the tax incentive programs while the nomination is in the works. National Register listing often generates other preservation efforts, such as local district designation, the revitalization of downtowns or neighborhoods, promotion of historic resources through heritage tourism and education, It's used as a way to advocate the importance of historic preservation at the local, state, and federal levels. The National Register is also a way to document Georgia's history through its built environment. The National Register is not a static program. We are researching new historic properties all the time, such as the American Small House, which was built in large numbers during the 1930s through the 1950s. These are most often associated with the dramatic increase in housing needs following World War II. Equalization schools built in Georgia in the 1950s and early 1960s are associated with the attempt to keep schools separate but equal. They were quickly abandoned with the desegregation of public schools. And ranch houses, which are now historic. Our office has lots of information about ranch houses in Georgia on our website. National Register listing is often an early step in preserving your historic resources in your communities. To learn more about the National Register process and recent National Register nominations in Georgia, sign up for our weekly and monthly ease newsletters. For articles about a wide range of Georgia's historic properties, archaeology, and preservation efforts. You can also find us online and through social media and on license plates throughout the state. Please contact me directly if you have any questions about the National Register or the Georgia Register process in Georgia. Thank you for your interest in historic preservation and the National Register in Georgia.